In this section of the course, we'll focus on the presentation layer and start to introduce some of the advanced concepts around grids, particularly pagination, remote sorting, and editor controls bound inside grids. We'll see how you can use Xed grids to provide powerful interfaces and move on to other controls as well. We've already seen a few basic grids as a good way to show information. However, as our application grows and we end up with more data, we need to think about how to help users find what they're after and how to avoid overloading the system. To handle paging grids, we can add a page size attribute to the store and a paging toolbar to the grid to let the user control the pagination. We do this in the store and in the docked items on the grid itself. We link the toolbar up with the same tool. The paging toolbar in the store will now collaborate to control what is displayed in the grid and will add start and page size arguments to each request. All we need to do now is add appropriate limits to our backend queries and we have a paginated grid. Adding filtering is a bit more involved, as we need to add a grid plugin to control the filtering. We also need to say how we intend to filter each column. This is done in the grid column section. Once you've got all your filters, you need to implement this in the back end. This can be done by building custom SQL queries based on the filter parameter that comes with each request. Now you have the means to both page and filter long lists of information without the need to send a lot of data to the user's browser. Sometimes, when you're editing a record, you need to create a whole elaborate screen or dialogue form with complex interactions between the fields. In other cases, you might just want to be able to quickly change a single value. For this use case, we can make our grids editable. Here, the key is to choose between editing on a cell-by-cell -cell basis like a spreadsheet or using Xt's row editing plugin, which gives you a sort of inline mini form on your grid to edit each column before saving. Let's first show the range of editing controls that you can use. Essentially, this is any single control that you can put on a form wrapped in an x.editor to place it on the grid. Let's add a few different editor controls to our bug list grid. Note that this combo box control selects a relation from one of the lookup stores. When it comes to saving this data back to the server, we also need to think about whether it's sent one field at a time or all of them in one go. This is controlled by the writer, which is on the model object in our case. Here we can configure it to just send for fields that have been updated to the server. This can be handy if you are maybe updating a few fields and don't want to overwhelm your server or fill up an audit log with unnecessary noise. Now we have a good, fast, interactive feeling grid editor, which is also nice and light on the network. When reporting data, you're often more interested in aggregate numbers than individual records. The grid control has a number of features which can be added, which can group and summarize store data, either in the browser or on the server. For now, we'll take a look at client-side grouping. Here, we set up some group headings to collect our data according to a certain field in the store, in this case, for user. Since it's common for reports of this sort to come from special report tables produced by, for example, BI developers, we'll also use a custom inline store backed against some flat, denormalized data, typical of a reporting system. Because we need the ability to provide summaries, each column in the grid has a specification for a function that aggregates data for that column with a relevant group. We can produce a sum, a count, or an average with the summary type config option, we can also add custom renderers to the summaries, just as we do with normal grid cells. Note that this is a perfect example of when you should be taking repeated code and refactoring out into a utility class. Here we will extract some anonymous functions and put them into our own version of the x.utils.format class. Now we have a good interactive report which shows us overall summaries and lets us drill down into the details.